Recreational Center does provide for clients in conjunction with the school district. In conjunction? Yeah, I mean, the school district, um, we offer behavioral services or some cases social skills services. We might provide, you know, speak, we do the speech and language and all the other stuff, but in some cases, we may not have a social skills provider in our district. Okay. Will regional center step in and provide like IEC or a vendor to do social skills outside of the, the school? The answer is that is maybe. Uh, it depends on the situation, depends on the individual, depends on what the family wants. Uh, does a, for example, we have different types of social skills vendors. Social skills is a very interesting thing. You know, one of the hallmarks of children with autism is that, if, you know, if when, when, when I'm doing a diagnostic evaluation, well, if you look at in the hand, couple of handouts on the DSM-4, what is, you know, looking at what is the diagnosis of autism, they really have to have multiple symptoms in social, uh, they have to have multiple social deficits. The kids who, they, they can make friends, but they can't keep them. They don't know how to make a friend. They don't know what a friend is. They, they miss uh, social cues. They miss nonverbal language. They, so many different areas, things which interfere with their ability to socialize and to make relationships and keep relationships and have those be successful relationships. Any kid can be a victim. That's a relationship. That's being a predation relationship. That's a relationship. That's not what we want. We want healthy relationships. So, so some kids, some families uh, will approach and say, you know, my child really has trouble even understanding how to make a friend. And they're working on that in school. If they're not working on that in school, we our guides them and say, you know, when go back to your IEP team, if they're not making friends at school, that's the primary place where they should be making friends, or at least working those skills. Ask, these things are appropriate goals, please discuss that with your IEP team, see if this is something which is, you know, this should be part of the IEP or not. Uh, and if it's something where we could possibly support that child as well, we said we have a, there's a group social skills uh, class that uh, one of our vendors offers where they're working literally with other kids who have uh, with a diagnosis of autism and literally working how to greet each other, how to, to interact with each other, how to have basic conversation, different than speech language pathology type uh, conversation, but more of a, it's one thing to, to, to have a hello, how are you, but if the kid's looking down and he's waiting for someone else to give him a cue that he should say hello, that's really going to be, that's a, that's a problem, that kid has to learn to look look someone else in the eye, see that they're actually leaning forward, having some kind of a cue saying, yes, I'm waiting for you to say hello, indicating interest, and recognizing that, ah, that person wants me to say hello. So that can be, work. you can work on that in a group setting. Uh, that's something parents could work on as well, so we would want to support the parent to learn these skills as well, but you may need to work with another child on that, and then a facilitator can, can work with a couple of children, three, four, five children, saying, hey, you know, look at how you're all, let's work on eye contact, today. let's work on, um, how to recognize social greeting that when someone says hello, you say hello back. <coughs> or what if it's something you don't like? What, how do you respond? Things like that. And again, a lot of that would be also be covered usually in the school situation as well. But we might support that moment because it might be different. The child might uh, be in a special day class such that there may be fewer opportunities for such greetings. And we might want to work with them, for example, as you mentioned, one of our vendors, in a more inclusive model. That kid actually can make conversation, but doesn't know how to be part of a bowling league, or wants to be part of pony league in, in baseball, or wants to join AYSL, and, but doesn't really understand what to do when the ball, not so much understanding the rules of the game, but more how to interact with other players on the team, and may need some to help facilitate t uh, uh, team, sh uh, team skills, things like that, uh, play skills, how to play with others. We say that's so important, but literally knowing that. So there's different, that's one area where the research center would come and look at a child and say, do they need group training? Do they need facilitation in, in the community? Are they ready actually for more play, do they need more play dates and how to support that child play dates? So that's one area where we'd be supporting the school. Uh, another type of thing, for example, uh, like Dr. Addison back there uh, is one of the, our vendors for uh, behavioral supports. Uh, we've got children who may need intense behavior intervention. They need a lot of drills and a lot of intensive work working on skills. They're, you know, we're not interested in whether your child can read. I don't mean that in a negative way. That's, that's what schools do. Schools do it better than regional centers. So we give it to the experts. We give it to Peggy, as you may have noticed. If Peggy can't do it, it's probably not going to be able to be done. Um, you, know, you know, we give it to the in, in Maryland back there. I mean, there's really some wonderful, great people out there. Teach your kid how to read, how to tell time, things like that. But your child may have a lot of issues with compliance. First word out of mouth is no. 
or their behavior is no, or they're just not going to do it. They're just not going to accept change. They're just not going to comply with you. They're non-compliant. Well, then the parents will sit there and be overwhelmed with their child who can know them to death. We try to get the support and, and we work with, with our vendors to come in and give that support. You may be getting that behavioral support at school from someone like uh, Jody. Uh, but we may also say you, know, you may need this type of support at home as well. And but we <coughs> teach you the skills. Let's have someone work with your child directly, but also work with you as the parent to get those skills. So those are areas where we support or not to supplant what schools are doing, but to help support the needs. And again, it may be different. Child may have some issues at home that they just don't have at school. And we have to look at that child individually. The child may, you know, the, and sometimes that's skill. Sometimes you got single parent. I work with some families. There's their single parent working two jobs, and they're just exhausted when they come home. And so when their kid sits there screaming and acting out, they don't have a, they don't have any kind of reserve to sit there and gut it out. Uh, and then, so they need some rest of the work sitting there to help work their child. So that family, that, that mom uh, or that dad can, can get some strength back. They may need some skills so they know that even when I'm exhausted and tired, there's some things I can do that will actually show my child um, the right kinds of support so that they can benefit and grow and, and not act out in such a way. So it, it's all different. Just as schools do it, that's why the whole concept of an IEP is an individualized educational plan. Our plan is called the IPP, the Individualized Program Plan. It's going to tell you what your child and what you as a family bring to the table. How can, how can we all support your child? And so it can be different than what the school's doing. It can be very similar to what the school's doing. Matter of fact, some of our vendors actually work in some of the school districts as vendors for them, and they're vendors for us. And some of those programs carry across all domains. It varies from where you are in the county. The reality is if you live in Piru, it's going to be different than if you live in Newberry Park. Access to services is very different around the county. But it also depends on you, the family, what your situation is, and what types of supports you want. Some families <coughs> want different types of supports. Some families want uh, or are able to accept some supports. You know, what do you do with the family that's, uh, assumed, as I said, that single mom working two jobs needs supports? Her, what types of supports she may need is very different than the family where they won the lottery and they're both at home. I mean, I don't know. Then you've got families such as, uh, yours where you're both working. You know, that's, they need what you need is a different level of support because you're both working. You're not you're not there. You're military. Military, you know. Uh, he's deployed. Exactly. The types of supports you need. And in the environment, what's the military base or military housing, what's accessible. We've had some vendors that have tried to get onto the C V base a few times when there's certain alerts going on to provide therapy and forget it. They're they're not being allowed in because of certain things. So how you support that family varies from family to family. We serve over 12,000 families in tri County Regional Center, more than 50% here in Ventura County, and each one's different. By the way, they'd like someone to point out back there. Uh, raise your wave a little bit. Up. Oh, that's Colleen Duncan. She's the Autism Coordinator for tri County Regional Center, and uh, she's kind of the, the person who's kind of the ramrod for a lot of things we're doing right now in terms of looking at how to support families, uh, how to support families both you know, for children and also for adults with autism. So I just wanted to say a shout out to her. Okay, do we have any more questions out there? Okay, one more. Um, one of the things that has come to mind, our grandson that we're raising is eight now, and at school the kids all know him, he's got his little peculiarities like most of the kids with autism do, and most of them like him, but now he's getting to that age where Is there ever any thought or any resource to have someone come and do assemblies or discuss <coughs> with the other children? Well, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> there is an ability awareness training that um, is provided by the SELPA um, where uh, a, com a school community um, can uh, work uh, to bring the program out to the school. It's a couple hundred dollars. Um, it has all the kids. It's designed to do up to a school of like four or five hundred kids. Um, lots of PTAs will sponsor it. Um, but it's just calling this, actually not calling this, I'll be calling me. <laughs> it's like coordinate that. And you take it out to a school and it really is to teach the kids about all different types of disabilities. Um, 
So um, yeah, it's great. It's an ability awareness program.